Good morning. Uh, thank you for all being here today. Uh, my name is Paul Beard. I am the chief of the Oakley Police Department. My last name is spelled B-E-A-R-D. Uh, the purpose of this press conference uh, is to explain our most recent developments in our case involving missing person and homicide victim Alexis Gabe. Uh, during this press conference, you will also hear from Oakley Police Detective Tyler Horn. His last name is spelled H-O-R-N. You will also hear from Antioch Police Detective John Cox. His last name is spelled C-O-X. Uh, you will also hear from the father of Alexis, uh, Mr. Gwyn Gabe. His whole name is spelled G-W-Y-N-G-A-B-E. At the conclusion of each of our presentations, uh, we will open the conference up to, so, to some question and answer. After the Q&A draws to an end, I will have Spanish-speaking interpreters assigned to myself, Detective Horn and Cox, and Mr. Gabe. Uh, that is in the event any of our Spanish-speaking Spanish media partners want to ask individual questions. We will not redo the whole conference in, in Spanish, but if there are specific questions, we will make that accommodation for you. Uh, we are going to be discussing some very sensitive and hurtful information today. I want to make sure that all the things we discuss are done so with grace and out of respect for the Gabe family. I realize the story of Alexis has been reported on certain nationwide outlets. I want to primarily address our local uh, community. The Oakley community has come together very strongly for Alexis in the past few months, and the Oakley community has absolutely served the Gabe family with dedicated service. Uh, my family has had roots in Oakley since 1944. I am proud to have a lifelong connection to Oakley. I am proud to be a product of Oakley, and I am proud to be your chief. The purpose of this press conference is to focus on Alexis and her memory and try to provide some measure of closure for those who have been impacted by her disappearance and her murder. I am fully aware there are questions and frustrations involving other people associated with this case. It is not my intent to discuss anybody than, other than Alexis and the form of evil that took her precious life. I want to provide, at this point, I'm going to provide everybody with a brief uh, case history of, of how this all came to be uh, leading up to the, uh, the point of last week. Alexis was reported to us as a missing person on January 27th when she did not return home from uh, Marshall Curtis Jones. Marshall Jones was an Antioch resident and a former boyfriend of Alexis. Um, Alexis's family began searching for Alexis. They found her car at the intersection of Trenton and Carrington right here in Oakley. Uh, they found that to be highly suspicious. They reported the incident to us. Our first initial officer is Officer Rod County. Uh, Rod County uh, took this case with, uh, with a certain uh, sense of, of heightened um, uh, awareness of the whole thing. He came back here to the PD and discussed it with his partners and some of our professional staff. And collectively, we all immediately felt that Alexis was in trouble. Uh, at that point, detectives and the Oakley command staff uh, came in on days off to to get the initial stages of this investigation rolling. From that point forward, the, this case has been worked on every day, and oftentimes it has been worked on around the clock. Uh, during the early stages of this investigation, I reassigned people from their normal assignments, and I assigned them to investigations to help our investigators in an effort to locate Alexis. As, a case, as our case wore on, Detective Tyler Horn and Sergeant Casey Minister uh, began to focus on Marshall Jones as a significant person of interest. Uh, we joined forces with detectives from the Antioch Police Department, uh, headed by Sergeant James Stinger and Detective uh, with investigators determined there was enough probable cause to believe uh, Marshall Jones uh, was responsible uh, for the murder of Alexis. Uh, this case was presented to the Contra Costa District Attorney's Office. A arrest warrant was signed uh, charging Marshall Jones with the murder of Alexis. Uh, Marshall Jones was killed in June of this year in a lethal confrontation with Seattle, a, a Seattle area task force as they attempted to arrest him for that warrant uh, for the murder of Alexis. Um, the investigators identified several areas of Amador County as likely areas that may hold clues or evidence for us in this case. Amador County was heavily focused on due to investigative techniques we used and information we had received. Early on in this investigation, we determined uh, Jackson Road, which is also known as Highway 16, was an area that Marshall Jones appeared to drive uh, to have traveled on. 
Uh, Jackson Road is a long rural road with many side roads coming off of it. Several of the detectives and the personnel who had been reassigned to assist our detectives searched several areas of Jackson Road early in this investigation. Our investigation also revealed the uh, very uh, well-known note written by Marshall Jones. Uh, that note uh, provided directions to an area just outside Pioneer, California. Uh, this note drove our strong interest to Pioneer. Uh, our investigators, uh, this, this team of investigators, essentially turned several areas of Pioneer literally upside down. Uh, we dug several areas and we even drained a, a large pond in the search for Alexis. Uh, the investigators have periodically returned to areas of, of Amador County to follow up on leads and areas of interest over the past few months. Based on recent discoveries, Amador County was exactly where our investigators needed to be. Um, at this point, I will have Detective Horn and Detective Cox speak to the actual investigation. First up will be Detective Tyler Horn. Hello. Uh, on Thursday, November 3rd of this year, Oakley and Antioch police investigators received a call from deputies from Amador County Sheriff's Office uh, regarding the discovery of human remains on Highway 16 near the town of Plymouth. The tip was emailed to Amador County by a citizen visiting the region from Alaska. The citizen was metal detecting and happened upon what he thought to be human remains. Amador County deputies and investigators swiftly responded to the scene to confirm the discovery. Since investigators in Amador County were intimately familiar with Alexis Gabe's disappearance, we were notified very promptly. The scene was losing daylight and it was secured until the morning. On November 4th, Oakley and Antioch police investigators responded to the scene to meet with Amador County personnel. Uh, members of Amador County Search and Rescue, California Office of Emergency Services Canines completed a thorough search of the area. Search parties covered approximately a half mile in either direction of the original site in an attempt to uh, locate any additional remains. No additional remains were located. The remains were taken to Amador County Sheriff's Office for identification. A forensic odontologist contracted through the Contra Costa County Coroner's Bureau was summoned to the scene. In the evening hours, the remains discovered on Highway 16 were confirmed to be, to be that of Alexis Gabe through her most recent dental records. Due to the fact that a forensic odontologist confirmed the partial remains via dental records, you can only imagine what we have recovered. Out of respect to the Gabe family, we do not want to get into the specifics of what exact remains were recovered. Other items of evidence consisting of earrings, black garbage bag remnants, and duct tape were also found. The earrings that were found to have been determined to belong to Alexis based on photographs of her wearing them. The condition of the remains did not lead us to a specific manner of death, but we were confident her remains were separated from one another and scattered into several areas. The criminal aspect of this investigation ceased on June 1st this year when the sole suspect, Marshall Curtis Jones, was killed in exchange with police in Washington State. With the discovery of Alexis' remains, the entirety of this homicide investigation has now been completed. Alexis' remains will be examined at Contra Costa, at Contra Costa County Coroner's Bureau. I would personally like to thank the Gabe family for their patience and grace while we work to complete this investigation to its final conclusion, and all the investigators that worked on this case from every agency are true professionals and a testament to this profession. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> the Oakley and Antioch Police Departments have always worked very closely together as neighboring cities with a common goal to provide the best public safety services to our communities. When the Oakley Police Department reached out to Antioch's Investigation Bureau, notifying us that a suspicious missing persons report may be connected to the city of Antioch, we did not hesitate partnering with Oakley PD to help solve this case. First off, I'd like to say that our thoughts, prayers, and hearts go out to the Gabe family for the loss of their loved one. We hope that in some small measure, or our support and efforts to surface what happened to Alexis Gabe and bring her home has in some way provided a bit of closure for the family. As they continue to mourn for their loved one, celebrate her life and eventually find a way to move forward as a family with our community support. Unfortunately, the main suspect in Alexis's murder, Marshall Curtis Jones, did not cooperate with the investigation and was killed when officers attempted to take him into custody. 
In this sense, Jones was not held accountable to the family to answer why he would commit such a horrible crime taking the coward's way out. Although another arrest was made in this case, and to echo Detective Horn's statement, I want to make it clear that Marshall Jones is the sole perpetrator of this murder. Contra Costa County Deputy District Attorney Satish Jollipali and Kabu Adadashwe were all intimately involved with this case and have thoroughly examined all of the evidence gathered. It has been determined there is not enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a crime was committed by any other person but Marshall Jones. The Antioch Police Department would like to thank the Amador County Sheriff's Office for all their assistance during the case. We would also like to thank the Pacific Northwest U.S. Marshals Task Force for attempting to take Marshall into custody. There were over 20 law enforcement agencies from local, state, and federal who assisted with this investigation, and I wish I could thank them all personally. I would like to thank the men and women of the Antioch Police, the Antioch Police Department and the Oakley Police Department who were professionally and personally invested in this investigation, spending countless hours working on this case. I can honestly say that we left no stone unturned. I would like to thank the Oakley Police Chief Paul Beard and the administration of the Antioch Police Department for your support and leadership seeing us through this investigation. And again, I would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the Gabe family. Uh, we put together a couple of slides on the TV above me uh, to give some context to the discovery uh, made this weekend. So this is the note uh, that's been put out on social media by the Gabe family. Uh, this note was determined to be written by Marshall Jones, and it was left uh, at the house he was staying at. The top portion has been blocked out to protect the safety of uninvolved people. The directions continue. It was a two-page note, and they ended in Pioneer, California. And if you take these directions, it's, it's basically from Google Maps, uh, turn by turn. This is uh, Google Maps. This is Marshall's... Uh, this is the direction that Marshall was supposed to be going. However, he did not take Watt Avenue off of 50. He ended up missing the exit and going on uh, Bradshaw Road, which is what all of us did when we followed the directions. So to the right is Watt Avenue and Jackson Road, and that's from the handwritten directions where he was supposed to turn or exit off of Highway 50 and turn left onto Jackson Road. The blue lines are his call records that we were able to get from his uh, cell phone number, and that showed him turning his device back on at about 8.52 and 8.54 p.m. on January 28th. This is what led us to believe that he was in that area. And if you look at the red line, that arrow indicates uh, a gas station that we were able to get surveillance video from showing uh, a car similar to his um, turning left onto Highway 16. And this is an overview. On the top left is uh, where he was determined to be based on his cell phone and the video. In the middle right there is where the remains were located. The next mark on Highway 16 is the, the next direction according to the, the handwritten directions. And then to the far right is Pioneer to give some context of where they were located. And that's a zoomed in uh, map of where the remains were eventually located. And I can play that again afterwards. Thank you, John. Thank you, John and Tyler. At this point, I want to point out how, how instrumental uh, Mr. Gabe has been as he has relentlessly kept his daughter, Alexis, in the forefront of many of our minds. Mr. Gabe has absolutely fought for his daughter, and he has honored her. I also, again, commend the community of Oakley for standing behind Alexis and the Gabe family so strongly. At this point, I will ask Mr. Gabe to step up and say a few words. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm here today with our sons, um, Gwen Martis and Gwen Austin, and some of our family members. Um, my wife, Rowena, couldn't join us today because she's still in the Philippines. This year has been really tough for us. 
besides the loss of our daughter, she and our family are also mourning the loss of her father who passed away a couple of weeks ago. When Detective Horn called me asking for our dentist phone number, I knew something was up. They came to our house Friday night to tell my wife and I who joined us on a video call about their discovery. While it was what we were praying to find Alexis and lay her to rest, the reality was still devastating to hear. Our hearts were shattered even more than what we thought possible. Deep inside, we were still holding on to hope that she's okay and that she's just out there somewhere waiting to be rescued and reunited with us. There are still so many questions unanswered. I'm not sure if there will ever be closure for our family in terms of the loss of Alexis, her heartless and premeditated murder, the cold-blooded way her body was desecrated, and the cowardly way her murderer chose to evade responsibility for his wrongdoings. But despite all the pain, anger, frustration, and grief, we are somehow relieved that she has been found and we can finally bring her home. We pray that our daughter can be at peace knowing her family and community gave their all to find her and will continue to do so because we will not stop until the rest of her remains are found. We have a lot of volunteers who are helping us search who don't care about the reward money. We have the support, strength, resilience, and love of this amazing community to endure the challenges ahead. We would like to thank the detectives who never stopped looking for Alexis, Detective Horn with Oakley PD, Sergeant Stenger and Detective Cox with Anya PD. Thank you so much for not giving up on us. Thank you for fulfilling your promise to not stop until you find our daughter. We also want to thank you, Oakley Chief Paul Beard, the mayor, city manager, the city council members, and the entire city of Oakley. Thank you to the anonymous donor who put up half of the reward money, to Mark and Violet Class and the entire team of Class Kids Foundation, to our community, to the 700 people who signed up to search, and to all the 16,000 members of our Facebook group page dedicated to finding Alexis. Thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts. We will never forget how great it has been to live in Oakley. Thank you. Okay. At this point, uh, we're going to begin to draw this to a close. Uh, I need to make some acknowledgments myself. Uh, we are a small PD. Uh, this crime was bigger than us as soon as it started. Uh, we received assistance from multiple agencies, both near and far, in this investigation to include the FBI, uh, the State of California Office of Emergency Services, uh, and the Contra Costa County District Attorney's Office investigators. I would be remiss not to especially acknowledge the Antioch Police Department and the Amador County Sheriff's Office. I've already mentioned uh, Sergeant Stinger and Detective Cox, but from Amador County, we have to acknowledge Lieutenant Jim Cardoza and Sergeant Kyle Wilson. Without the assistance and teamwork of all these agencies, this investigation would have been made much harder than it already was. I also wish to, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank and acknowledge the community of Oakley. I would like to thank the media for always getting the story of Alexis out there, so thank you. And at this point, I would just like to remind the community that we will have a candlelight vigil in the memory of Alexis uh, right here at our Civic Center Plaza on December 9th at 7 p.m. It will be a great opportunity for all of the followers of the Gabe family and the community of Oakley to come support the Gabe family even further and remember Alexis uh, in the best way that we can. And uh, with that, I will close and open this up for questions and answers by saying this, Alexis is finally home. So.
So I, uh, we're all available for uh, Q&A at this point. If anybody has a question, just raise your hand and we will acknowledge that. Yes, ma'am. So the question is, uh, can we share more about the evidence we have collected in regards to Marshall Jones? To best answer that question, I will turn that question over to my investigators. Um, so the specific evidence, uh, there's quite a bit. There's a lot of it being circumstantial, um, small amounts of biological evidence, and of course, uh, we completed a wiretap investigation, and um, there was nothing to sway us from uh, Marshall Jones. Are there any testimony that you can point to that would say that this is the exact testimony that was used in the wiretap and was called by the victim? Uh, based on all the evidence and the circumstantial evidence, we believe that the crime occurred in Antioch. Uh, we do not believe that Alexis left Marshall's house alive. Uh, we haven't really received any further cooperation from other people involved in this case. Um, and as far as uh, evidence goes, uh, I think what Detective Cox uh, alluded to is that there's nothing to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that anyone else besides Marshall Jones was responsible. How many initial warrants did this case end up getting in total? Uh, we got up to 60. No, sir, that was uh, discovered during a search warrant somewhat early on in the investigation. And the scent that had been sold to the neighbor that lived in the same house you had the earlier? Correct, so it was a, essentially a step-by-step -step map that he appeared to have uh, copied off of a Google Maps uh, because obviously he didn't want to turn his cell phone on. Um, so he had a physical map that he would use in order to get to the place where he wanted to go. We found that map uh, during a search warrant that we served in the city of Vacaville. And this was described as a friend's house? A relative's house, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that was just the scent of that odor? Yes, sir. So you were given that scent and you put it on the victim's clothing and all the rest of it. So I would assume that you would have been able to tie that in with the fact that the victim was found in the same clothing and same hat that was found in the victim's house? Uh, that is a determination we can't make based off of uh, the amount of remains that we have. So black plastic bags were something that we uh, determined early on that could have been uh, involved in this investigation, whether it be the disposal of a body or disposal of evidence. Um, so obviously the black plastic bag was relative, relevant, and uh, there was duct tape that was on that bag. So we, we collect everything just out of safety. We could not determine a connection there. Um, we had the map and that's what we focused our efforts on. Now earlier in this case, you said there was an initial search of the Murray Place that was held on the day. It was not searched before. We searched uh, closer to the intersection of, of Jackson and Bradshaw. Uh, this was about 20, 25 minutes away by vehicle. Uh, in which direction? West? East. East. It was, it was essentially in a turnout off the highway. Yes, so the Plymouth would have been uh, a route that he would have taken to get ultimately to Pioneer.
So on January 26th is when Alexis went to Marshall's house in Antioch. She was reported missing on the 27th. And the, uh, the call records that we showed you uh, from Vacaville to Pioneer, uh, that was on the 28th, the evening of the 28th. I don't try to get into the mind of the killer. Um, he did what he did for no known reason. That was June June first of this year. Yeah. 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 The uh, we believe he transported her in his vehicle. Uh, we have evidence to suggest that um, her DNA was found in the back of the vehicle. Uh, the, the crime lab wasn't able to determine whether or not that was blood. They only obtained her profile. out to them separately after this probably I have someone over here so to clarify uh, we there was only a, a few days that we didn't know where he was uh, he had fled to Washington the week after. Uh, we were pinging his phone, and there was physical surveillance being conducted on him uh, off and on while he was up in Washington. Uh, and then the wiretap was April 25th, 30 days, uh, continuing 30 days from April 25th. I really want I really want to leave this press conference as a, as a focus on Alexis. Um, I do acknowledge I do recognize there has been a degree of uh, less than cooperative na of a less co cooperative nature out of this family. Uh, nothing that has happened in the past week is going to change any decisions that have been made by DA's office or, or PD or, or anything like that. Uh, our team of investigators, our joint, joint team of investigators, did put together a, a very thorough investigation on all parties involved with this case. Uh, that investigation was delivered to the DA's office, and as Detective Cox said, we are, we are at that point where, at this point, uh, there will be no further traction on that. Um, and I, I really just want to leave this at, at Alexis. I, I hope you can understand. The, the question came of, how do we want to remember Alexis? And I choose to remember Alexis as a very vital member of this community and a, a person that we all uh, supported uh, and we, we all wanted back. And that's where I'd really like to leave this. So after, after we end the Q&A, uh, I'm gonna have an interpreter assigned to myself. An interpreter will be assigned to Detective uh, Cox and Horn and an interpreter will be assigned to Mr. Gabe if there are any Spanish speaking networks that want to ask specific questions. Uh, uh, we're not gonna redo the whole thing in Spanish, but if there are specific questions, we will do that. Okay, so I think we're at a point uh, when we're gonna draw this to a close. Uh, again, uh, you have all been a, a, an, an element of support uh, for this investigation. 
and a community partner uh, for us. So thank you very much. And again, to the community of Oakley, thank you. I thank you for, on behalf of the Oakley PD, the Anak PD, and the Gabe family. Thank you all.